typical day in the ocean. A fish swims around looking for something to eat, but nothing seems very yummy. Some plants, rocks, some sand. Wait! It's an octopus! I've gotten my best ideas, my greatest insight into how things work. When I was in the environment, completely immersed there, seeing how things work in their natural state. Marine biologist Roger Hanlon couldn't believe the image that he got. An octopus camouflages a plant, escapes, and inks the camera. I was just mesmerized by this weird creature doing these amazing tricks, fooling this human being, me in this case. And just because it was beautiful and exotic, I got interested in it. It's a little bit of art and science blended together. And not only that, when I began to look at the scientific literature, I found out that people have the wrong idea about what camouflage is. It's not looking exactly like the background. It's much more interesting and complicated <laughs> than that. He explains that camouflage is in fact a very intriguing visual trick. If you're a yummy octopus and a barracuda is trying to eat you, you want to look unlike a yummy octopus. You want to look like a rock or some kind of poisonous fish or something else. So camouflage has two different basic elements. One is don't get detected in the first place and the other is if you're going to get seen or detected then look like something else that's not interesting or at least you know make your recognition difficult so the animal doesn't really know what you are. Animals known as cephalopods, what you might know as cuttlefish, squid, or octopus have developed this functionality at its best and are considered the kings of camouflage. They have soft skin, they have no protection, they don't have a shell, they taste good, and they have solved their problem of not getting eaten by changing their appearance. Cephalopods can produce all of the basic features of camouflage. Color, contrast, brightness, pattern, and texture, which is a feature that only cephalopods are able to produce. That combination, yes, they can go anywhere, and be camouflaged. It's really a remarkably highly evolved, sophisticated, and beautiful system. Roger dives to film the animal in the field and also observes it at experiments at the Marine Biological Lab. Among thousands of images, he could identify and group the patterns produced by mollusks and camouflage into three or four types. There is uniform camouflage when there is literally no contrast in the pattern. There is mottled, which has small scale, light, and dark spots, and a few different colors. And finally, disruptive camouflage. This is a great form of camouflage in which the animal will create bright white things in different scales and patterns. It's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle that's been scrambled and doesn't look like any one thing. It looks like these disjunct pieces. And this is called disruptive coloration. And it's a great term because it disrupts the recognition of what the animal really is. The secret for the cephalopods is to look at the background and to decide which pattern to use. The image in the eye gets sent to the brain, which picks a pattern and sends a signal to the muscles in the skin to create that pattern by opening and closing cells. These cells are called chromatophores, which you can see now in a very close-up shot of squid skin. And a chromatophore is like a little, a little balloon full of paint, little pigment granules. And they take that and they just open it like this into a thin disk of color, or boink, it goes back into this little bag that you can't see. So by just pulling the color granules out or letting them come back in, you can create color or no color. And if you have multiple little chromatophores all over the place, all over the skin, you open some and you don't open others and you create a pattern. And if you have the nerves, that electric skin, controlling ones to make a stripe or a spot or all dark or all red or all yellow, they can control this relatively simple system. The chromatophores have red, yellow, and brown pigments, so it creates not only these three colors, 
but all the possible combinations of the three. But how do cephalopods produce greens and blues? They don't come from chromatophores. They come from the next layer down in the skin where light is reflected off cells we call iridophores. They are iridescent. And the iridescence is a little bit like the blue color on my shirt, but it's shiny because the light is being reflected. None of the light is being absorbed like a paint. The light just hits this and reflects off. So we have a layer of pigments, yellow, red, and brown, and underneath we have a layer of iridescent cells that reflect blues and greens. And collectively, you can get the rainbow, or you can get the artist palette of all the colors that we can see. Roger explains that engineers are learning from the skin of these animals to build more efficient cell phone or computer display that uses layers and available light instead of batteries. The squid skin and the cuttlefish skin, they don't do that at all. They have no internal battery to create light. They're just using the available light and they're creating all the same colors and patterns. So that's of interest to human society because if we can create displays and telephones and other things that use the available light and don't use all that battery power to create light, then we've made a better product. So stand by. I think the animal kingdom has something to teach us in that regard. Access the activities in the Curiosity Machine to play with color and simulate camouflage. You can also be a scientist. Right, Roger? Anyone can have curiosity and you can exercise that curiosity no matter where you are, whether it's on a subway in New York City underground or you're out in the ocean or out in the field or a playground. Nature and science and physics and chemistry, they're all around us everywhere. It's paying attention to what's around you and asking those questions about how it works and what's going on. That's the key thing. You, you can make beautiful discoveries right in your backyard.